So I spent a crazy 87 hours testing every major AI platform, and guess what? Most of us are probably using the wrong tool for what we actually need. I've been playing around with ChatGPT, Claude, Perplexity, Gemini, Copilot, and Llama for the past few weeks, and what I found out might completely change the way you use AI. In this video, I'm gonna show you which AI is best at different stuff, what each one is really good at, what they're not so good at, and ultimately, which one you should be using based on what you're trying to do. But before we dive in, if you're interested in learning more about AI, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, I would love for you to join my free school community called AI Quest, where we make it fun to learn about AI together. I'll put the link in the description below. Now, let's get into comparing these different AI platforms. So let's start with a quick intro of each of the AI platforms we're gonna be looking at today. So starting with ChatGPT, this is probably the platform that you already know and love. You're probably already using this on a day-to-day -day basis, but if you're not familiar, just to provide a little background and context, ChatGPT came out in November of 2022 and it basically broke the internet. It was the fastest growing app ever and it's made by a company called OpenAI and runs on something called GPT-4. I like to think of it as the Swiss army knife of AIs. It tries to do a little bit of everything. There's a free version and a paid version that can do even more cool stuff. Next up, we have Claude, which is developed by a company called Anthropic. Now, Anthropic was started by people who used to work at OpenAI. It's designed to be super helpful, safe, and honest. The newest version is called Claude 3, and it comes in three different flavors. Opus, the fancy one, Sonnet, the middle one, and Haiku, the simpler one. Claude is known for giving really thoughtful answers and being good at thinking through problems. Next up, we have Perplexity. Perplexity is like having a research assistant that can actually search the internet in real time. It's pretty new compared to the others, but it's getting super popular because it can look things up online, tell you where it got its information from, and put everything together in a nice readable answer. Fourth, we have Gemini, which is from Google. So Gemini used to be called Bard. It's Google's version of ChatGPT. So since it's made by Google, it knows a ton of stuff. It comes in different versions like Nano, Pro, and Ultra, kind of like small, medium, and large sizes. It works really well with other Google stuff like Gmail and Docs. Fifth, we have Copilot by Microsoft. So Microsoft Copilot is powered by the same technology as ChatGPT, but it's built into Microsoft's ecosystem. It started out helping people write code, but now does all kinds of things. If you already use Microsoft Office or Windows, Copilot is built right in. And finally, we have Llama, which is created by Meta, the team behind Facebook, Instagram, and all that good stuff. What makes Llama different is that it's open source, which means that you can actually download it and run it on your own computer if you want. The newest version is Llama 3, and it's surprisingly good for something that's free and open. People who care a lot about privacy or who like to tinker with technology really like Llama. Now that we know who's who, let's talk about how I actually tested them. To make sure I was being fair to all the AIs, I came up with 10 different things to test them on, which I will show on the screen now. For each test, I asked all the AIs the same exact questions with the same exact prompts and evaluated their answers on a scale of one to 10 based on the criteria that I'll show on the screen now. Before we move on, one thing I do wanna mention is that some of my ratings here are subjective based on my own experience. So treat everything that I'm saying here as my opinion based on my personal experience, which might be completely different than your opinion based on your experience, which is completely okay. So let's kick this off with ChatGPT. The thing that surprised me about ChatGPT is that it's pretty good at almost everything. Kind of like that friend who's decent at every sport, but not necessarily the champion of anyone. To go over some of the strengths of ChatGPT, it's amazing at creative writing. When I asked it to write a story about a robot discovering emotions, it wrote a story that actually made me feel things. I also love ChatGPT for coming up with ad copy or marketing ideas, and I think it really outperforms some of the other AI platforms in this area. Next, it's really good at explaining code. So I'm not a developer, I don't necessarily come from a super technical background, but when I gave it a broken Python program, it not only fixed it, but it was able to explain why it was broken in a way that made sense, even to me. And finally, it follows directions super well. So if you tell it exactly how you want something done, it usually does it just right. To highlight some of the weaknesses of ChatGPT, it doesn't know stuff that happened after its training cutoff. So if you ask about any really recent events, it'll tell you that it doesn't know. And then finally, sometimes it just makes stuff up. So if you ask about something really obscure, it might give you an answer that sounds right, but is actually totally made up. 
So to go over some of the best uses for ChatGPT, it really excels when you need creative stuff like stories, ad copy, or marketing ideas. It's great for when you're learning to code and need things explained, or it's great for just general questions where you don't need super up-to-date information. But when I tried Claude, I noticed some big differences. What really surprised me about Claude was how thoughtful it was, especially when it came to really complicated or sensitive questions. So to go over some of the strengths of Claude, it's like the wise friend who really thinks before speaking. When I gave it ethical dilemmas or complex problems, it gave the most thoughtful and well-reasoned answers. It's also super good at following detailed instructions. If you give Claude a complicated set of directions, it follows them better than almost any other AI. And finally, it can handle really long conversations and documents. So if you need to analyze a huge text, Claude is your best friend. To go over some of its weaknesses, sometimes it's a little too careful. There were times when Claude refused to answer perfectly reasonable questions that the other AIs had no problem with. And finally, it's not quite as creative as ChatGPT when it comes to making up stories or generating ideas. To go over some of the best use cases for Claude, I would say it really excels when it comes to things like analyzing long documents, thinking through complex problems, or when you need nuanced, thoughtful responses. Moving on to perplexity, which is completely different than the others. So the thing that blew me away about perplexity is that it changes the game when it comes to getting up-to-date factual information. So to highlight some of its strengths, it can search the internet in real time. Next, it tells you where it actually got its information from with actual links, which makes it way more trustworthy. And finally, it's like having a research assistant. When I asked it to research a topic, it gave me the most complete and up-to-date information. To highlight some of the weaknesses, conversations didn't feel quite as natural as with ChatGPT or Claude. It's more like talking to a search engine than a person. Also, it's not great at creative stuff. When I asked for a story, it was pretty boring compared to what ChatGPT and Claude were able to come up with. So to go over some of the best use cases for perplexity, I would say it really excels when it comes to things like researching current topics, fact checking, and getting comprehensive information on a specific subject. Next up is Google's Gemini, which also had some really interesting quirks. What surprised me most about Gemini was how well it actually was able to use Google's massive knowledge base and how good it was with interpreting images. So to go over some of the key strengths of Gemini, it knows a ton of facts. For straight up factual questions about history, science, and general knowledge, Gemini was usually spot on. It's really good at understanding images. If you show it a picture or a chart, it can explain what's going on better than most other AIs. And finally, it's great with data and numbers, which makes sense considering that it's made by Google. To go over some of its key weaknesses, when I asked it to write longer stuff, it wasn't as good as ChatGPT or Claude. The writing just wasn't quite as smooth. Also, sometimes it was too confident when it was actually wrong. It would give incorrect information without admitting that it might be unsure. To go over some of the best uses for Gemini, I would say it makes sense if you're analyzing images or charts, making sense of data and numbers. And it's really great if you're already within the Google ecosystem, if you're already using G Suite and Google Docs and Google Sheets, it's really convenient having that AI built into that existing ecosystem that you might already be using. Next, let's check out Microsoft's Copilot. What surprised me most about Copilot was how good it was at practical work-related tasks. To highlight some of the key strengths of Copilot, it's absolutely amazing at coding. If you need help writing or fixing code, Copilot was consistently the best. It's great at making business documents and presentations when connected to Office. And finally, it's really good at solving everyday work problems. To highlight some of the weaknesses, it's not quite as versatile if you're not using Microsoft products, and its creative writing isn't quite as good as ChatGPT or Claude. To go over some of the best use cases for Copilot, I would say it really makes sense if you're doing things like programming and coding, making business documents, and really just getting more done in the Microsoft tools if you're already using the Microsoft ecosystem. Finally, let's have a look at Meta's Llama. What surprised me most about Llama was how good an open source free AI could be compared to some of the big commercial players. To highlight some of its key strengths, it's great for privacy since you can run it on your own computer without sending your data to some company's servers. It's surprisingly good at reasoning through complex problems, almost as good as Claude sometimes. And finally, you can customize it if you know how to code, which is cool for specific projects. To highlight some of the key weaknesses, I would say that the responses aren't quite as polished as some of the other AIs. Like ChatGPT, it doesn't know about super recent events, and you need to have some technical know-how to actually set it up and use it locally. 
To go over some of the best use cases for Llama, I would say it probably makes sense if privacy is super important to you, if you like to tinker around and really customize things, and if you wanna process stuff locally instead of doing things in the cloud. Now let's compare all of these AI platforms head to head in all of our different test categories. So starting off with creative writing, ChatGPT was the clear winner here with a score of nine out of 10. Its stories were actually enjoyable to read and its ad copy was the most compelling in my opinion. Claude came in second place with a score of eight out of 10. Gemini and Copilot both got a score of six out of 10 and Perplexity and Llama were at the bottom with scores of five and 5.5. For the next category, we have factual accuracy. In first place, we had Perplexity, which crushed it here with a score of 9.5 out of 10 because it can actually look things up online. In second place, we had Gemini, which was close behind with a score of nine, thanks to Google's knowledge. Claude got an eight, ChatGPT a 7.5, mostly because of a knowledge cutoff, Copilot a seven, and Llama a 6.5. Our next category is coding help. So in first place, Copilot was the absolute champion here with a perfect 10 out of 10, which makes sense since it started as a coding assistant. In second place, we got ChatGPT with a score of 8.5, Gemini an eight, Claude a 7.5, Llama a seven, and Perplexity a six. For the next category, we have complex reasoning. And in first place, we had Claude, which was the star here with a 9.5 out of 10. It gave the most thoughtful answers to tricky problems. In second place, surprisingly, Llama came in second here with an 8.5, followed with ChatGPT with a score of eight. Next, Gemini got a score of 7.5, Copilot a score of seven, and at the bottom we had Perplexity with a score of 6.5. For the last category, we had following instructions. And in first place, we had a tie here with Claude and ChatGPT being tied in first place with scores of nine out of 10. From there, Copilot got a score of eight, Gemini a 7.5, and both Llama and Perplexity got a score of seven. So moving on to the overall scores, when I took all the scores across all the different categories, here's how they all ranked. And feel free to pause the video and drop a comment on which AI platform you think is gonna rank number one. It might not be the one that you're expecting. So in first place, drum roll please. We have Claude with a score of 8.4 out of 10. In second place, we had ChatGPT, which was very, very close behind with a score of 8.3 out of 10. In third place, we had Gemini with a score of 7.8 out of 10. In fourth place, we had Copilot with a score of 7.7 .7 out of 10. In fifth place, we had Perplexity with a score of 7.5 out of 10. And then in last place, we have Llama with a score of 7.2 out of 10. So there you have it. After spending hours and hours rigorously testing all these different AI platforms, the main thing I found out is that there isn't just one best platform out there. It all just really depends on what you're trying to do. If you found this video to be helpful in any way, shape or form, please do me a huge favor and drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. It's a few clicks for you, but it really means the world for me. Also, again, don't forget to join me in my free school community called AI Quest. We make it fun to learn about AI. Again, the link is in the description. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.